These 10 purchases are some of the best ways to spend your money if you want to improve your learning. I've been consistently studying for a little over 8 years now and some of the things I've bought to level up my studying turned out to be absolute game changers and some things well were a complete waste of money. As you'll see none of these items are really weird or unusual but that's sort of the point. In this video I'll be sharing the core components of a study setup that actually make a difference. Also if you're new here my name is Ben and I'm a structural engineer working and living on the east coast of Australia and if you find value in this video please do give it a like and consider subscribing. Alright so first up is a laptop stand. I've been using a laptop stand for about three years now and for me it was one of those small purchases that until you buy it you don't realize how much you're going to use it. Before I got a laptop stand just like everyone else I would hunch over my laptop for hours at a time and eventually started getting pain in my neck and back. But by simply bringing my screen up to eye level and correcting my posture I was able to make studying a lot more comfortable and reduce the I was putting on my body. The specific laptop stand I've got is called the Griffin Elevator Laptop Stand and in terms of customization this product isn't very good. If you do a quick bit of research you'll realize that there's lots of better options out there that allow you to do things like adjust the height and angle or even ones that allow you to fold it down so you can carry it with you. In saying this though if you are on a budget and you don't really care about aesthetics and you also do majority of your studying at home anyways you can always just grab some old books and stack them up or even an old shoe box put your laptop up on top and you'll get majority of the same benefits. Next up is an external monitor and for me this was a massive improvement to my setup. If you're like me and you often have multiple windows open at the same time you'll love being able to spread out and have everything open next to each other. Back when I was a student one of the most common use cases for my monitor was having the live or recorded lecture up on my monitor in front of me and then having the screen that I could write on down below. Having things set up like this allowed me to have a full screen both for the lecture and my notes instead of having to squeeze things into the old side-by-side -side setup. And since both these screens were linked I was able to do things like take a screenshot from my monitor which I had the lecture slides on and then paste that screenshot straight into my notes. For me I found that this is a big win over having to take a photo or simply just copy things down. The monitor in my current setup is a 24 inch Samsung monitor and I found for a small 140 by 60 centimeter desk this size fits well. If an external monitor is something that you've been considering considering buying, please take this as your sign to go and get it because for me an external monitor was one of the best things I bought as a student. A wireless keyboard and mouse. Similar to a laptop stand or an external monitor, these two items will just make things more comfortable and allow you to work in a position that you could easily be in all day. Now the keyboard I use isn't anything special and it's just a cheap one from Microsoft but honestly I've had no issues with it. On the other hand the mouse I use is the Logitech MX Master 3S and this mouse is a beast. It feels great in your hand, has two different scroll wheels, and also has three customizable buttons on the side. I've been seriously impressed by this mouse and I actually ended up buying a second one so I'd have one both at work and at home. I'll leave a link in the description in case you want to check out this mouse yourself. Alright and next up is your own study desk. I think that having a dedicated study space is one of the best things you can do as a student. For me it meant that I always had a place to study no matter the time or day and I didn't always have to rely on going to university to have somewhere comfortable to study. By the way, if you have a really keen eye, you may have noticed that I got a new desk, and this desk is from FlexiSpot, who is sponsoring this part of the video. For those of you that haven't heard of FlexiSpot, FlexiSpot is a premium workspace furniture brand that are well known for their standing desks. They recently sent me an E7 standing desk, and I've been trying it out for the last couple of weeks, and I've been really impressed. This E7 desk goes as low as 60.5 centimeters and maxes out at 126 centimeters. I'm six foot two, and the max side is actually too tall for me so even if you are really tall this desk should have you covered. This desk comes with an electronic desk height controller and with this controller you can manually move the desk up and down using these arrows and you can also save up to four custom heights. Personally I found that having custom height presets is one of my favorite things about this desk. Being able to just stand up or sit down, press one button and have the desk come to the perfect height is honestly such a great experience. Without these buttons I don't think I would stand up or sit down as much because fiddling with the heights would be really annoying trying to get it perfect. Also as the desk moves it's actually super quiet so you don't need to worry about that either. This desk can support up to 161 kilograms in weight which is way overkill for most heavy monitors and computers and because of its solid metal frame it's really sturdy 
even at full height. On FlexiSpot's website, they have a bunch of different desk configurations and sizes, and also have quite a few accessories available too, like cable management trays and monitor arms. One more thing I really like about this desk is that you can adjust the base frame to suit different desktop sizes. So this means in the future, if you want to change the size of your desk or upgrade just the desktop material, you can adjust the size of the frame and reattach the new desktop. If you're interested in getting a standing desk or you want to learn more about FlexiSpot, be sure to check them out using my link in the description. Thanks again to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video and let's get back to it. A desk lamp with adjustable lighting. I think having good lighting is pretty essential when you're studying and being able to adjust it is just the cherry on top. Most of the time when I'm studying I like to have the light set on a cool white colour with full brightness as I feel like this keeps me alert and wide awake. On the other hand when I'm reading at night I like to turn this light to a warm orange so it's not so harsh on my eyes. An ergonomic chair. If you're studying engineering or really any degree for that matter there's going to be times where you're spending all day in a chair. As a young student, you probably won't think much of this, but maybe this is where everyone's back issues start. You'll think that you're all good because nothing is actually hurting right now, but all of a sudden the pain will set in and you won't be able to get rid of it. This is exactly what happened to me a couple of years ago, and ever since I've been really particular about what sort of office chair that I have. Right now I have a heavy duty Pargo office chair, and it has all the extra special features you'd want, like being able to tilt, moving the backrest up and down, and also having a memory foam seat. Unfortunately, good quality office chairs do come with a big price tag, but knowing what I do now about the health effects of having a bad chair, I totally think it's worth the extra bit of money. All right, and next up is sticky notes. For me, sticky notes have been an incredibly useful tool when it comes to referencing key information, both in my textbooks and in the design standards. What I've done in the past is write little notes on the bit that sticks out, so I can quickly find what I'm looking for without opening each tab. For such a cheap cost, I definitely recommend just keeping a little stack of these on your desk. Noise cancelling headphones. Overhearing a conversation or just being distracted by other loud noises around you can be such a productivity killer. Personally, if I'm trying to read something and someone is having a conversation nearby, there's times where I can't even hear myself think, so being able to put in these headphones and drown out that noise has been really great. I've been using a pair of AirPod Pros and they're really good at creating a quiet space even with no music playing. I also find these headphones really comfortable as they're lightweight and don't go over my ears, which allows me to wear them for hours. If you struggle with distractions and you want to get better at staying in the zone for longer, I think headphones are a great way of doing that. An iPad or tablet. Now, if you're a university student, it's pretty safe to assume that you're probably already going to have some sort of laptop, but what you may have not have done is buy a separate tablet for note taking. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I'm a big advocate for taking digital notes and for me making the switch from physical notes to digital notes was one of the best study habit changes I made as a student. Now I'm not going to go into depth about all the different benefits you get through taking digital notes because I've already got a full video on that on my channel but if you are interested I'll leave a link to that video in the description. Anyways while I was a student I used a Microsoft Surface Pro as both my main laptop and my note taking device and for anyone looking for a budget option that can do it all I still think that the Microsoft Surface Pro is a really good choice. Alternatively though, if you can afford both a laptop and a tablet, I do think that having an iPad solely for note taking and then having a separate more capable laptop will give you the best of both worlds. All right, and next is digital study material. What I mean by this is things like design guides or worked examples, online platforms like Udemy, Chegg or Skillshare, or even people's individual online course. Still to this day, after university, I often pay for resources like this because they can be the quickest and easiest way to learn something. And although these resources do often come at a small cost, I've always found them to be worth the money because the person teaching whatever it is is often super passionate about the topic, so they go above and beyond. Of course, though, you should always do your research before buying any product, just in case someone's trying to make a quick buck. But for the most part, if you can see that something's got reviews or that a lot of people are using it, that's probably a pretty good sign that whatever it is, is legit. Anyways, I hope that you learned something from this video, and if you did enjoy it, you might like this video here where I go through some of my favourite study tips that aren't for everyone. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.